Hey guys, so I'm out here in the garage tonight. Today's Friday night. Um, and I did some stuff. Um, probably should explain some of it. Um, because it may be a little confusing. Uh, because in my, my last video, I don't know what I said, but I said something about the pocket bike. Um, and then I got my batteries in, stuff like that. Um, so a while ago I got my batteries in um, they're basically I got two of these uh, batteries there's the other ones on the snow blower I think yeah I think it's yeah, it's on snow blower um, I bought two of these um, a while ago these are Amstron um, yeah 7 amp hour 12 volt batteries I thought they were 7.2 and I ordered them, but when they showed up to 7, I don't really care. It's not that much of a difference. Um, but I ordered two of these, um, and I made a video about like charging them and testing voltage and all that stuff. Um, and then I never uploaded it, like, because I made the video, and I just kind of forgot about uploading it. And it's been a couple while, and then been a while, so then I just deleted the video. Um, and then I made another video and I talked about these batteries um, And I was like, you know installing them and stuff on the pocket bike um, Something like that I Forget how it went, but I was talking about the batteries and installing them on the pocket bike um, So that, yeah, that, might, that part might have been a little bit confusing um, but Basically the batteries I bought um, I'm not going to use them for the pocket bike, and I'm converting the pocket bike from electric to gas, um, which was my original plan when I originally got it. You know, when I got it, that was my original plan, but then I decided to go with electric, and now I'm finally going to do the um, gas conversion. Um, so I have one on the snow blower. Um, I'm going to put these two into my power supply because that thing's good on like um things good like power goes out or whatever you know you charge your phone or if you're going somewhere on a, like a trip like a camping trip or something you can charge your phone and stuff off of it basically what it's for um and then this battery um my new battery um i'm gonna use this one just to have around the shop because I always need one just like test lights and test you know you know different things out that are 12 volt you know I'm always testing lights and make sure this works and that so I always need a battery so this would be like my test battery and these batteries been sitting out in cold you got as cold as I think it was negative four in the garage um it's like 20 degrees out I think, I think it might be like 15 20 um and I checked the voltage like last sa I checked it Saturday, um, so it was it six days ago, and the voltage stayed the same ever since I charged them, you know, topped them off and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, so that's about the batteries. Um, and then, like I like I said last Saturday, uh, I made another video. And then I didn't like, you know, I didn't really like, you know, how it turned out. So then I just did, never decided to upload it. Um, and then I was just thinking about coming out on Sunday and making a video. But I just never got around to it. Um, so, that, so today's uh, Friday. I think, I think it's the 27th. Um, and I'm going to go over what I did. Um, you yeah, know, basically what I did and what I need to do. Alright, so it's a pocket bike. Um, basically, the first thing I did, well, I put it off here, but other than that, I basically took off. I don't know why, I don't know why it's sitting here actually. I took off everything that I didn't need or, or the plastics, which I still need kind of. So I took off. This bin is all stuff I'm going to reuse. And this stuff I'm not going to put back on the pocket bike. But I'm still going to use it for stuff. It just so you guys can see how much I took off. And 
to, you know, so I don't get stuff mixed together, basically. Um, um, basically, this is just, you know, the batteries, the charger, the motor, some of the other pieces. Um, some of the motor parts, like this, like, little bracket, I don't really need off the Harbor Freight motor. Um, this stuff I'm keeping, just basically the fairing, uh, I got yeah, the fairing, and the seat, and then just bolts. Uh, just so I don't lose them all, so I put them in boxes. Um, so that was my first step. I basically took off everything I didn't need and just stripped it down to the frame. Well, not fully the frame, but you know, took off pretty much every, everything. And then what I did um, is that, and I looked at it and see what I need to remove. Um, I knew right off the bat before I even start, I need to remove my I think it's called a down tube. You know, went like here. I can show you how it went. it went like that, and you know, and the battery sat on it. I knew I had to chop that out. Cause there's no way that could even work. Um, so I basically just chop that out. And I got the motor, and this motor is basically stripped down. There's nothing else I could take off with, you know, without taking off the head and all that stuff. But it's basically stripped down block. Got a clutch up here just, just for, you know, so I can show you. I don't have the shroud on. The shroud's right there. I had to take it off so I could put it into position. Because that shroud is a little bit big. But it does fit. I haven't tested it, but I'm pretty sure. Because it sticks out. It should just bolt right on that side so when I install it you know just I, I can actually install it from the other side but I was you know working on this side so I just went with this side um, but the shroud I just took it off that bolt back on um, clutch just sitting here um, and this is not this is kind of where oh yeah I said chop up this bracket um, had to chop out these two cross members on each side and then the motor mount I chopped that out I didn't think I had to but you know, it's the kind of stuff you run into. I had to chop it out. Um, it's going to sit a little higher. This is just what I have. License plate, square tube. Yeah, I know. Um, but, you can see there's still room. This, I can put this up here until the head starts hitting the frame. It goes up another inch and an inch and a half. Um, maybe two inches. Probably another inch and a half it goes up. Um, it goes up and a little bit more back. But that's basically where it sits. You know, besides a little up and a little bit back. But that's basically where it sits. Um, um, oh, I forgot what I was going to say. But, oh yeah. I guess go on this side. Uh, the head. The head um, tucks up in here as close as I can get it. I think, I think it hits on this first. Or I'm not sure what it hits on. I don't remember. Um, but basically... I put it up. I can. I put it up as far as I can until it hits the frame. Um, the carb. All right. Well, this is basically what the carb is. This is just exhaust, but it's right here. Um, you know, I got no, no, you know, blockage. Tons of room. Um, my air filter. Where's the carb? There it is. My air filter. I'm not gonna put on the stock one because that one's big. I'm just gonna put on like a little cone or something. And I can still use the choke because it's you know all the way over here um and then this is my breather it sticks out the side i'll probably what i'll do you know when i do this i'll probably put it up under the seat like that or something won't be sticking out the side which is sitting there it's my breather spark spark plug just off um the brake cable i need to take it off and basically as you guys can see how they routed it they routed up over this um, cross member, I guess you call it, and down here. Uh, what I basically want to do is do the same type of thing, but a little bit different. Um, basically, I'm going to take it off, run it on the outside of this tube, um, and basically go up, go along the frame, um, you know, go up, go along the frame, and then just go in. Um, so that way it's not going, you know, hitting the motor because this does affect it, and then going up and over and all that, it just it'll just go, you know, kind of up and over. Um, so gotta take that off. Um, 
Haven't done it yet. That's what I gotta do. And then my motor mount, I'm gonna get some rectangular tubing. So, you know, it's not that much room, so I can't use really box. Probably three quarter inch wide by like an inch and a half. I think the biggest width I can get. Uh, I think it's like just shy of eighth inch. Um, but basically what I'll do, I'll you know, clean all that up, but, um, not sure. I, I've just been looking at it. I think I might, not sure I'm going to mount it, the tube. I might either put it up in here or put it on here. And it's going to come down around the block. Um, it's going to go under. And then I'm going to put another bar here. Uh, sorry about that, but, um. Um, also, I'm gonna put a bar here connects from here to there had to cut it out because it was the motor mount plate all combined As you see there it's all like combined so uh, I'm just gonna get some tubing. I actually Probably gonna try to repurpose this um, I think got plenty. Oh, you this will work Just Cut some of this out That way you don't have to buy some or get some or whatever, but just want a piece across there Angle's gonna come down, basically tap into there, and then I'm gonna get a motor mount plate that'll be welded onto the rectangular tubing and bolted onto the motor. Um, since I cut out these supports, I'm afraid if you sit on it, that this right here is just gonna, you know, kind of fold downward because um, it didn't do that because there's a bar there but since I had to cut it I'm afraid it's gonna fold downwards so what I'm gonna have to do is get another get some more tubing or whatever might be able to use that and then just kind of go from here and instead of going straight across because it won't work it'll hit my valve cover and my head um, basically come out maybe try to bend it a little bit and then go back in I think that'll work and then maybe, maybe like a bar off of here. I don't really want to put too many bars because if I ever need to remove it, you know. I think what I'm going to do is a bar from here um, and then kind of come outward and down here. But I think this bar is going to be quick, like disconnect. Because if I put a bar there, I can't really remove the motor because once I weld the whole down to it in, I have to basically just slide it out and slide it in. Um, so I'd probably have to make that so like bolts on or clamps on or something like that. Same type of deal on the other side. It's going to be harder because there's, you know, a lot more things going on over there. Um, and then my chain. Try to speed up this video here. Chain is a 41 pitch clutch because that's what I have. Um, it's going to go back to a jack shaft which is going to be mounted. Um either on the back of these pipes or up in here I'm not sure I'm, I think it's pretty much gonna go back here jack shaft 41 back to jack shaft not sure what the pegs gonna be yet um, then it's gonna go over to 25 pitch I have to make custom sprocket for that got to bore out a sprocket to fit the uh, 25 pitch pocket bike chain basically you know jack shaft over hook to the chain so basically how it's going to work, I'm keeping the rear band brakes because they work actually pretty good. Um, and I don't have front brakes, so you know. And plus I don't feel like making a whole new brake system when this one works perfectly fine. Um, a gas tank, I have one. I have to find it. Uh, I have to find some parts. I'm not sure if I have actually a manifold that bolts on. I know I, I know I made an exhaust, but I'm not sure if I throw it out or not. I'm not sure if I throw out that flange. Um, if I don't have one, I'm going to have to build a flange. My plans for the exhaust is basically just to come out, you know, just come out and then bend it kind of downward. I'm thinking at this angle and then just like, I don't know, just down here. And then maybe along here or just down. And it's going to go to one of those like cheap, you know, lawnmower mufflers. Those like screw on ones, the uh, really skinny ones. Um, they should work. Um, gas tank, like I said, it's going to be mounted up here, um, because that's where I have room for a gas tank. Um, so let's see, I covered pretty much everything. I think that's it. 
um, throttle. I'm gonna get a twist throttle, like a pocket bike twist throttle, and then rig it up to the carb. Um, I think that's it. Um, and also, I was thinking when I came out here, I'm gonna powder coat these rims too, um, because they look ugly, you know. So just clean them up. I'm gonna powder coat them. Not sure what color. I have black and white. I can get some other colors. Um, I'm probably just gonna go with white, marshmallow white, um, because that's what I have. I have it in my powder coat and bin over there. Um, plus I don't feel like buying any other colors. So I think I'll just use white. Go with white, because black would just blend in. So I'll just go with white, stand out a little bit. Um, trying to speed her up here. Um, yeah, that's pretty much about it. So I'm going to see you guys later when I find some parts. Alright guys, so I found some stuff. I couldn't find the exhaust flange, so I have to make one. Yeah, those are fun to make. Um, couldn't find that, so I'm pretty sure I scrapped it. Um, got my gas tank. This I bought at a swap meet. Uh, I think this year or last year. 2013 or 14, I'm not sure. Um, but I bought this at a swap meet. This is a pretty cool gas cap. It's like a vented um, cap. You can vent it or not vent it. It's a pretty cool little tank. Yeah, I don't know. I think it's me on like a push mower. That's my guess how you know how it mounts. Looks like you've been on like a push mower. Got it for like a buck. Um, and I haven't water tested it yet, but I'm pretty sure it's, you know, I didn't test to make sure it doesn't leak, but I'm pretty sure it doesn't, um, you know, output, that needs to be cleaned up, um, so that's kind of mushroomed, so I need to sand that up, um, so, oh, and this is gonna go, might have to cut the plastic some, and oh, it doesn't fit just like doesn't fit just like the pocket bike. This was too high. I remember on that. I didn't think it would not fit on this one. It's the same pocket bike, so I don't know how. So the same exact frame, basically. Hmm. Oh, it would fit if I put it like that. Eh, see what Jack stands on there, I couldn't put on because I hit it. Um, but see, they're gonna go. That kind of, I don't know. I don't think it'll look too bad because the plastic will come out right here. So if I notch the back plastics, I think it'll, you know, once I put the plastics on, it should look, it should look fine. Not sure how I have it now. Yeah, I think, I think it'll fit fine. I think it'll work. I'm not sure. I'm not liking that. This doesn't work. Uh, I got a backup. Yeah, I got a couple of these things actually here. I think that's all of them. I think what my plan was to. Is this one or maybe? I think it might have been this one or maybe it was a different one. I think it was this one. So my plan. Put that up there. Um, and show a hole in the spout, fix those up. Or, uh, I think it's a single output, too. I forget where the hole is on this one. Oh, yeah, it's right there. So that actually be like a nice little vent hole or whatever. Yeah, these aren't that big, but that fits up there actually really nice. This one, I would say, out of all these tanks, probably fits the best. Um, but I'm not sure if I like it. it. Actually, it doesn't look bad. Like, it actually looks like it was kind of built for it. But I don't know how big it is. I think it may be... I don't know how big this is. It's not that big. This would get me around the block a couple of times. I don't know. It would probably get me pretty far, because... I don't know. I'll probably get... Like five, 
six times around the block and be out of gas. That's probably how it would be. But I think this one is, I think this one's oil. I don't think it is. I think, so I think I might use this one. I'll use this one and see how it works. If it doesn't work good, then I got a couple more options over here I can use. But this one fits the best. So this is the tank I'm going to go with. Got some fuel on it. Got like five, six feet of it. Got my key here. Has a light and a kill. So if I want to add a light, which I probably won't. If I wanted to, I could. Um, this is going to go somewhere on here. Got some chain that was just that's just for mocking up purposes. But it's pretty much about it. Not sure what I'm gonna do now. Um, I kind of have powder coating in my head for some reason. Let's break out the old powder coater and do some powder coating. Have that on my head, but um, not sure if I want to do that. I don't think I want to do it now. Probably do it later after I, you know, build the frame and actually, you know, get it driving. But yeah, so um, see you guys later. Hey guys, so um, yeah, since that last little part, um, yeah, I don't know what I've been doing, um, basically wanted to make a little sandblasting cabinet thing, I'm a jig, um, and yeah. So basically what I did is I had this chest, you know, sitting there. Um and then thought make it into a sandblasting cabinet. So I put on a lid, put on a little screen, cut out some plastic out of that container, caulked it in there, um, add some hinges, um put a hundred pounds of sand, well I put tile down the first layer because a bunch of oil. Um, and then I put about 100 pounds of sand in there. And my little light here, my little elevation thing, uh, it doesn't work too well. This gun, this Harbor Freight gun, they suck. Um, even most of the reviews online, like for the sandblasting cabinets, they said they all suck. Um, you know, they don't really work too good. Um, yes, yeah, so it, it doesn't work too well. You can't really see through that. Uh, it doesn't shoot any sand. Like it shoots a little bit and then it stops. I don't know. It, it just not turning out well. I think I'm just gonna just go to Harbor Freight event um, and buy like a um, maybe those hundred dollar sandblasting cabinets. You know the desktop ones. I got sand in my eyes, sand in my mouth. Oh, it sucks. Um, so I think I'm just gonna buy one of those cabinets. <laughs> It's not working out too well. Um, I'm a, I think what I might do is just try a different gun. They're like 20 bucks and get like a different gun. So I think I'm going to try a different one. And if this setup doesn't work, because I don't do sandblasting much anyway. And it's going to be in that corner anyway. I, you know, it's just not really going to bother me that much. But I think it's the gun they suck. So if I, um, I'm just buy like a $20 one. Campbell with Hallsfield, I heard they're pretty good. Um, so I get one of those, test it out, see if it works, don't work. And I'll just kind of give up on this little project. I made one kind of before for my little air racer, but it didn't really work out too well. Um, and I just thought it was just like a cooler or some plastic duct taped in there. It worked, not really, but it kind of worked. It. Um, and, I, and all the parts came off that spot. Yeah, the spot blaster that I bought for 50 bucks. That fucking just sucks. It just sucks. It's terrible. It doesn't work really. Um, so yeah, I'm not going to use that anymore. Um, I don't want to get a sandblast cap like right now. Because um, I'm going to get... I'm thinking about getting a, you know, one of those horizontal bandsaws. The hard freight 4x6s. Um, so you know, to cut up my metal. Uh, so I was, I'm thinking about getting one of those, and then I'll put it in that corner. 
Wow, which I need to clean up anyway. I need to go through all this shit. But I'll, I'll put it, you know, in here. And then I'll build a little, like, little stand for it so I can roll it around. Um, that's if I do get it. I'm thinking about that. I'm gonna think about, um, sandblast cabinet put there. I mean, not a sandblast cabinet, a horizontal bandsaw. If I do get a sandblast cabinet, I just put, I'll probably put it right over there. But I would rather have a bandsaw more than a sandblaster, because I would use it a lot more than a sandblaster. Uh, because I don't really use sandblasters that much. Um... So yeah, definitely need to clean up that. I've been thinking about getting the hard freights. They're like two fifty. You know, it's like the twenty percent off or whatever, like fifty bucks off. So it's like two hundred bucks. Um, for the horizontal bandsaw. I've been thinking about getting it. I'm not sure. Uh, and it won't fit under there, but I'll put it over there. If I do get it, I've been thinking about getting it because it'd be nice, like on this project. Where I need to cut some degrees and some straight cuts, you know, not using a vice and uh, sawzall, because that doesn't work too well. It just doesn't get straight cuts, and just never ends up well. It always, it's always crooked cuts. Same with the end grinder, never get really good straight cuts. So I'd rather have bandsaw because you just put it in there, clamp it, put it on, let it do its thing, then you get perfectly straight cuts. Um, so I want a bandsaw. I'm thinking about getting. I'm not sure yet. I might get one. Uh, I'll, let, I'll let you guys know if I do get a bandsaw. Um, haven't worked on this at all. Mainly because I can't really do anything without metal. Really, I need. So I don't really think there's anything I can really do without getting me some rectangle. I don't know how much I need. Probably like three. Probably like two feet, three feet, four feet. I don't know. It's probably about two feet. Two foot piece of rectangle or two. I'm sure they'll charge me a bunch for that. Um, so yeah, get some rectangular too. There's not much I can do without it. Because that basically forms that. Motor play can't make. So I don't know. I don't have the tube yet. Um, I could weld in that little cross piece. But I'd rather just do that when I do the whole tube. Um... So that way it would be a lot better. Um, so there's not much I can do really until I get metal. Um, yeah, it's pretty much about it. You know, I can't really do anything without metal. I guess I can order parts and stuff. It's on, I did the math. It's like 50 bucks for It's not bad. Um, so, yeah. So you can't do much. Um, I think what I'm going to do is take off the wheel. I think I'm going to take out the front one. It's a lot easier to take off. Um, clean it up. A powder coat it maybe tonight. And just see how it looks on there. Since I got nothing else to do. And since Well, I got to clean up all this. But it's pretty much about it. Oh, yeah. And that racing mower. Well, racing mower is going to. Um, that's going to be leaving soon. Um, I'm training my friend. This racing mower, and then like, and then there's wheels, um, cause I don't really need them anyway. Um, and seventy dollars, I'm getting a Yamaha Maxim seven fifty. Um, it's like a sport bike. I want to call it like a, like a, you know, like a street bike. It's just like a sportster style. Um, I'll be getting that. I don't know, maybe this week or next week. That'll be a fun little project. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with it yet, cause. It's you know, it's missing parts. Um, probably get it running. And then I'll go from there on that project. Um, that's gonna probably get, I'll probably just go over there in that corner. But, yeah, so you'll be seeing that gone and a new addition. Um, it's pretty much about all I think of. Yeah, so I'm gonna see you guys later. Hey guys, so um, I um, started to do some powder coating, uh, and these rims, uh, actually on the scooter, they're actually split uh, rims, or whatever, yeah, split rims, so they're two piece, and there's three bolts, and you bolt apart, uh, which are perfect, because I can fit one half in there, and then 
Got to clean off the other one. It's over there. It's over there. Um, it works pretty good cleaning off the wire brush. But just on a drill. Um, I need like a really like skinny, like a small one to get in these cracks and stuff because I can't really get in cracks in the other one. And like maybe like an air die grinder or something would work good. Um, yeah, so I got the oven set up, preheated it, sprayed it with powder. Um, now I'm cooking it. I'm just using my little hard freights out. This thing works pretty good if you need like a little setup that you just do, you know, every now and then like I do. Um, and I'm out of powder. I'm out of white powder. I, I'm pretty sure I'm out. I don't have much left. I didn't have much when I started. Um, so I need to go hard before I get some more white. I have black over there. But, you know, if you're going to paint a rim, you're going to paint both sides white not one side white and one side black so it'd be kind of stupid this thing works pretty good you know um seems like when i sprayed out i always get like little run marks like on the top like right here like a little bit of like you know like little, little run marks almost um seems like i always get them no matter how i spray it because you really just missed it on um and Basically, how I have this in here, because you just basically just want to sit the metal on there. Um, I have the, um, the rack with the tray on top, and then I have the rim, and it's a three-piece rim. I mean, not three-piece, a three-hole. And then what I did, um, I got some, these 1024 bolts right here. Um, they don't thread in, but they, you know, they fit the hole. I put a nut on that side, nut on the top, kind of put it on the bottom, put a nut on here, nut on top, and just sandwiched it, and then elevated it like that. Um, did all three holes, and then that way it, it's, you know, about, you know, three eighths of an inch off the thing, and it's all level. And then when, when you spread some pliers, grab a bolt, hold it, hook your, you know, ground um, cable up. Use your foot pedal spray, or some sometimes your hand trigger. Um, I like the foot pedal more. The, I like the foot pedal more than hand trigger because if you're holding a piece, like I, I'm always holding my pieces when I spray them. I don't like hang them and then spray them, uh, which I probably should do, but it's not really that important. So I just hold it and then I spray. It. If I had like the hand trigger, uh, which some do. It would be kind of hard, you know, because I'd probably have to find a way to hang it. It's a lot easier just pulling it out with pliers and then just using the foot pedal here. And this thing works pretty good, you know. Um, so yeah, I'm, now I'm just baking it. And the boring part of powder coating is just waiting and waiting, because you know you gotta preheat it for about ten minutes, and then you gotta cook it for like whatever for you know. You can cook it for how long you want. I'm cooking it for about 25 minutes. Probably needs like 15, 20, but whatever. I'll shut off early if I need to. But the problem is just, you know, it has to do its thing in the oven. It just takes forever. Um, so what I do is I just clean up, start cleaning other parts, and just go on my phone and stuff like that. Yeah, so uh, see you guys later.